بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبي أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Why would Surah Al-Asr be extremely important for you at this time? We hear it in the Jum'a Khutbah, everybody keeps quoting it and nobody really pays much attention to the message behind the Surah itself. Why do you think Imam Al-Shafi'i Alayhi said if only Surah Al-Asr were to be revealed for all of mankind it would have been sufficient, only that not the whole Quran, just Surah Al-Asr. Why? Because it said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, Wal Asr. By the declining day, that's why Asir is squeezed. The day when it finishes, it squeezes. It squeezes mankind, everything is squeezed. By the declining time, so it is another near. By the declining, meaning it's in a decline. Wal Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusrin. That Verily, mankind is in a state of loss. It didn't say al khusr. It didn't describe that, oh, this is the loss or that is the loss. No, it says fi khusrin, la fi khusrin, meaning an overwhelming state of loss, meaning a big loss of all the things that we have. Man is in a decline and is in a state of loss, except, except. Except the ones who believe and do righteous work. Because it has to be from the lens of belief that you're going to stop yourself from drinking. It has to be from the lens of belief where you have to stop yourself from smoking, from doing adultery, from doing zina, from, from stealing, from cheating, from lying, from doing all of the immoral things because the world is actually gone in a very hedonistic fashion. Whatever makes you feel good, that's what you should do. Now children are actually eight, eight, at the age of 8, 9, 10 experimenting with marijuana and drugs and all kinds of things because it's probably, oh yeah, do it, whatever makes you feel good. And then they realize when they hit 24, 25, 30, their whole life has actually gone to, uh, into the gutters and then what do they do? So it has to be from the lens of belief. It is not that the intelligent one, oh, this guy's a PhD or that guy's a medical doctor or this one, is, she, is a, she is a dentist of the highest profession. It's not the intelligence that will stop you from doing wrong. Because there's a lot of intelligent people do a lot of sick things. You know, this one other guy was caught with pedophilia, this other one was gone doing bank robbery, he was, you know, very intelligent people. This one started murdering others because they were intelligent. That doesn't mean that they were good because they didn't think from the brain of Iman. They didn't think from the lens of faith. Except the ones who believe and do righteous works. So righteous works is actually when you believe, when you truly believe, your works will be righteous. Why? You will do good things to others. You will not shun kindness. You will be a kind person. You will be compassionate. You will have empathy for the poor and the downtrodden, for the needy, for the for the orphans, you will uh, help feed the, uh, the the hungry. You will do things that will actually give you goodness in your heart. That's what belief actually brings. That's why it's from the lens of belief. That's, this surah is extremely important for you and I. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ And the ones who enjoin one another to truth and enjoin one another to patience. I believe, this is my personal opinion, that when you enjoin people to truth, you have to bear patiently, you see. It's not you just enjoining the truth and just waiting patiently. No, you have to bear patiently because if when you tell people nowadays, hey look, stop doing that, meaning I could have never believed in my lifetime that I would think that some of the hadith of the Messenger of Allah would come true, that people would be openly fornicating on the street and the best of us will say, could you please do it somewhere else? I said, well, when will that time come? Hey, that, that's so far, I mean, that's not in my lifetime. Now it's, now it's rampant. It's something that, that even animals don't do things like that. So it's there. So for us, we have to understand that when you actually enjoin to truth and you say in this, in this world, when you say, listen, smoking is not good for you. Alcohol is not good for you. Cheating on your spouse is not good for you. All of these vulgar talks and all of these things, cheating and lying and whether you're blue collar, red collar, white collar, yellow collar, whatever collar you are, it doesn't 
it doesn't cut it. It does not matter. Meaning to say the standard of Islam is the same for everyone. You cannot cheat, you cannot lie, you cannot do all of those things. But at the same time, when you tell people you can't do that, what will happen? They will actually fight back this because the, the, the nafs fights, you see? Everything is about the soul. Because even as Muslims, we are there and we say, yeah, okay, I don't, I don't care about drinking, so that's okay. Oh, but I care about smoking. So that should be fine. I'll bring, oh, it's just makru. Uh, even though it destroys my lungs and destroys the environment and destroys a lot of things. Every, no, no, no problem. I'd rather pay $20 for cigarettes rather than actually feed a hungry family for a whole month. So you justify your wrongdoings because at the time your nafs doesn't care about alcohol, no problem, but your nafs cares about cigarette. So at the end of the day, it is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, it is what your nafs is saying. So what I'm trying to say here is that these four categories in Surah Al-Asr, because mankind is in a state of loss, a big overwhelming loss. What is in a state of loss? Aminu, the ones who believe, do righteous works, the ones who enjoin to truth, and the ones who actually enjoin to sabr after saying the truth. Be ready to actually take the backlash, especially in the days that we're going ahead this hedonistic model that we have brought for the world and with this great internet while the little people are do, trying to do a little bandage job at the end trying to do good works coming to you giving you a good message the overwhelming effect of the the internet is so inundating that the human being soul is actually suppressed right to the bottom is lascivious it, it, it takes you towards uh, 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 an angle of immorality that it have, could have never ever been thought from our forefathers and it's getting worse and worse every day. So brothers and sisters, try to enjoy these four points and have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your goal and make sure you think with the lens of the Iman, you think with the heart of Iman because it has to come from Iman first. You have to strengthen your Iman. Nothing else counts. It has to start. It your, your beginning to the trajectory towards righteousness has to start with Iman. Amantu Billahi wa Rasuli. That you believe in Allah and then you believe in His Messenger. This has to be the start. It cannot be from an intellectual pursuit of, oh, I'm intellectualizing a great theory. It does not come there. As I told you before, intellectual people, some of them do very horrible and immoral things. It's not the intellect. Intellect's great to use when it actually has it been wrapped with morality and wrapped with belief. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you this guidance inshallah and bless all of you and keep you away from a lot of wrong things. This is the time where you actually have to stand and take the coals in your hand and, and really have to take a stance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and guide you and give you better days ahead. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of mankind. Ameen.